Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next example. I believe that will be the last example of this particular type where we're shooting bullets into beams that can rotate. But here I want to show you how things change when a bullet doesn't come in straight like this, perpendicular to the uh, direction of the beam relative to its point of rotation, but at an angle of 30 degrees. Could be any angle, but in this case we we'll choose an angle of 30 degrees. What will now be the final angle of velocity of this beam as it gets hit by the bullet? And let's say that the bullet remains in the beam. So when the bullet strikes the beam, it has velocity in this direction. That means it has a horizontal component and it has a vertical component. So let's call this V initial, and this is V initial horizontal and V initial vertical. Now, the vertical component of that velocity will have absolutely no effect on the angular momentum of this beam because it's completely perpendicular, and so the, perp uh, I shouldn't say perpendicular, it's completely in line with the point of rotation of the beam and the beam itself. So there's no angular momentum portion relative to this component of the velocity. It has to be in a direction perpendicular to the line of the point of rotation like this. So that means I can only consider this component of the initial velocity and I have to ignore this component of the initial velocity. So that means that the effective velocity in the horizontal direction perpendicular to the beam is equal to the initial velocity times the, of course this angle here is the same as this angle here and that's adjacent to the hypotenuse and to the angle so that would be equal to the cosine of theta. So the only thing that changes here that you take the velocity of the bullet, multiply times the cosine of the angle that it makes with the horizontal, and that will then be the velocity representing the portion of the bullet that gives it its angular momentum. So now you can imagine that that component acts as if it came through like this, and at that very moment it's along the tangent of this circular path with radius L being 2 meters, and so we have to find the equivalent angle of velocity of the bullet as it passes through the beam at that point. Actually, it stops, it doesn't go all the way through the beam. So, tangential velocity is equal to r times omega, the angle of velocity, or the angle of velocity is equal to um, the tangential velocity divided by the radius, which in this case is the length of the beam. But in this case also, the tangential velocity will actually be the initial velocity times the cosine of theta, so v initial times the cosine of theta divided by L, and that will be the equivalent angle of velocity of the bullet when it strikes the beam. So now we can go ahead and write the equation, L initial equals L final, of course L represents the angular momentum, and initially since the beam was not moving, again think about it as being a bird's eye view, so this is kind of like a horizontal on a table, no gravity involved. We can say that that's equal to the moment of inertia of the bullet, times the initial angle of velocity of the bullet, which of course we're going to use that equation right there, plus the moment of inertia of the beam, times the initial angle of velocity of the beam, of course we note that that is equal to zero, so that goes away, that equals, remember now the bullet sticks in the beam, so we can combine the moment of inertia of the bullet plus the moment of inertia of the beam, times omega final, which is what we're looking for, that's what we're after. So we're going to rearrange this equation, so omega final is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the bullet times the initial angle of velocity of the bullet equivalent relative to its tangential velocity divided by this quantity right here, which is the moment of inertia of the bullet plus the moment of inertia of the beam. All right, let's plug in what we know. I for the bullet is still going to be ml squared. The initial angle of velocity is going to be v initial times the cosine of theta divided by l. Notice that this l will cancel out that l. We're going to divide the whole thing by i of the bullet, which is ml squared plus i of the beam, which is going to be one third mass times l squared. Now notice, we have an L in the numerator, and we have two L's, or L squared in the denominator, which means that this L will cancel out with those two, and now you're left with the numerator of M, V initial times the cosine of theta, and the denominator will be the mass of the bullet times L, plus one-third 
the mass of the beam times L. All right, we're now ready to plug in the numbers. And so we have the mass of the bullet, which is 0.02 kilograms. That's 20 grams converted kilograms. Velocity initial of the bullet, 300 meters per second. The cosine of 30 degrees, all divided by, okay, the mass of the bullet times the length of the beam. So it would be 0.02 kilograms times the mass of the, uh, the length of the beam, which is two meters, plus one third the mass of the beam times the length. So one third, five times two. So we have one third, five kilograms times two meters. So let me get out of your way so you can see what I've done so far. All right, so we have the numerator, we have the denominator, and now we need a calculator. All right, so I have uh, 10 divided by three plus uh, 0.02 times two equals, take the inverse of that, multiply times 0 0.02 times 300 times the cosine of 30 equals, and we get 1.54. 1.54, and of course that would be radians per second. So that would now be the final angle velocity of the beam after the bullet hits it. Only difference from what we did in the previous example, where the bullet came in straight like this, is that we only can take the component that's perpendicular to the line from where the bullet hits to the point of rotation. Instead of taking the whole velocity, we only take the perpendicular component. And the vertical component here, of course, has no bearing at all on the final angular momentum. And that's how you solve that.